Could there be anything worse than being robbed of everything that makes you, you? Certainly not. After all, what we really have in this world is our own meat suit. Not only are there outward threats to your existence, but there is a naturally occurring inward threat as well. Human history has been marked by a progression of our medical sciences to stamp out diseases, whether they be caused by predatory organisms or by our own genetics. In a lot of ways, we are much luckier today than we have been as many medicines exist to treat illnesses we experience. However, in other ways, we are not so fortunate. Many diseases still plague our species and few are as insidious as the Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is a form of dementia which essentially means the breakdown of your mind on a neuron by neuron basis. Dementia is such a terrible form of disease because not only will it result in expiration of a person, but prior to that expiration it will slowly rob them of their memories, ability to speak, think clearly, move effectively, and really anything that is associated with increased quality of life. But our species being the big-brained, hyper-intelligent, insane apes that we are, are currently working to rectify this issue. A new form of medicine utilizing sound waves known as ultrasound has become something of an attention grabber as of late due to its ability to help deliver medicine where it is needed most in the brain. So first, we must discuss what Alzheimer's actually is to get a feel for why this brain disease is so devastating and why really anyone watching this who may be in their 50s could already be developing this disease and not even realize it. Alzheimer's essentially results in spongification of the brain. Spongification is seen as many little holes within the neural tissue. If you were to take a slice of a person's brain with an advanced form of Alzheimer's, you would have the same cross section as if you cut a sponge in half. This is accomplished due to the game end of the neural tissue in giant clumps. As you could probably guess, when neural tissues end, this takes brain function with it, leading to an ultimate degradation over time. But how is this accomplished? When the brain begins to age, certain processes begin to break down, or perhaps even they were not very effective to begin with and aging only makes it worse. One such process is the collection of amyloid plaques within the brain itself. These proteins exist on the surface of the membrane of neurons naturally, but our body produces a lot throughout the life, so it's not really that big of a deal. This particular protein, though, is quite important as it plays an essential role in neural growth and repair, which, as you can guess, is how we learn, grow, and maintain the overall health of our brains. However, as they present on the surface, they are cut by enzymes. When they are cut off, they will float off, and usually in a healthy brain, they will be broken down and recycled, much like many other mechanisms in our body do to other things that could be potentially dangerous if they're not broken down. In an unhealthy brain, or someone who is plagued by Alzheimer's, they will have these proteins float off, but due to faulty recycling techniques, these proteins will begin to build up, not just in the surrounding area, but eventually they will tip over into becoming protein filaments. These filaments will be composed of a protein complex that were cut, and they will continue to compound on one another until finally they become something known as a senile plaque. The senile plaque is a collection of protein filaments that attach to themselves, which in turn attach to the neurons and impede their ability to operate to some degree, and can also be in the way of forming new connections with other neurons. This sends the ability to learn right out the window, and even to some degree, they can inhibit the body's ability to send information across the synaptic gap. However, this is not all. The plaque does play a role, but it's not really the whole story concerning Alzheimer's disease. Another issue begins to arise in the brain over time that can result in outright game end of a neuron, which leads to another whole host of issues, as you could imagine. The tau protein resides in the actual dendrites of a neuron. They keep the neural fibers within the sheath connected and maintained. These dendrites will go on to form a synaptic gap with another neuron, which in turn will interpret and send electrical signals to the next, and there you go, you have a chain of neurons. On a macroscope, this is what makes you, you. However, over time, the tau proteins will disassociate from these neural fibers, which in turn will cause them to fall apart. This will cause the neuron to ultimately retract from other neurons. The dendrites will degrade and retract backwards, wrapping around the neuron. This will lead to the end of that neuron and with it any piece of memory you had associated with it. Early in the degradation process, it is thought that these amyloid proteins will begin to aggregate. And when they do, they may be toxic to the synaptic gap and more specifically the dendrites of the neuron around the synaptic gap. They can coagulate in the area where neurochemicals are being released and this causes many issues as our whole communication process is based upon the ability of our neurons to talk to one another. With the chemicals blocked or at minimum inhibited, this can cause forgetfulness and difficulty operating in general. So even before you start exhibiting damage to the brain, this is sort of a precursor of things to come. This may also influence the formation of senile plaques later on as the brain is impeded from normal functioning. So all is lost, right? May as well throw in the towel after 55? Well, not exactly. Again, humanity is humanity. And if it's not a challenge, then what's the point? We have in our brains a protecting mechanism that is also harmful in this process. The blood-brain barrier exists to stop contaminants from entering our brain and wreaking havoc. This is important, say, if there is like a blood infection, but it's exceedingly detrimental if you are trying to deliver antibodies and medicines to the brain and not just the area surrounding it. Currently, we have medicines that help dissolve senile plaques and lessen the effects of tau proteins. The issue is getting those into the brain without quite 
literally opening the skull and injecting a needle into our thinking organ. So how do we get medicines from the blood, past the blood brain barrier, and into the affected tissue? Why, it's focused ultrasound, of course. Exactly, a near similar method used to look at babies while they are still in the womb, and naturally, we've had a functional medicine for a while, just not the correct application. Go figure. Focused ultrasound has two consequences that have been shown to help in trials done in mice and sheep, with a few clinical trials being done currently in the United States, France, and Australia. The ultrasound is used to basically vibrate the blood-brain barrier and within it, the vessel delivering oxygen and nutrients to the brain. The areas that the oxygen and nutrients must pass through is exceedingly small, which will help keep out invaders, but this also keeps out medicine. When this flexing happens due to the ultrasound, it lets in the medicine by expanding the openings, thus making it more permeable. The medicine can get in and then begin dissolving plaques, but the second effect is also fairly interesting. As we all know, dissolving plaques is not enough. The tau proteins must also be attacked. There is a medicine currently being developed that can inhibit tau protein aggregation and dissolve existing aggregates. On top of this, antibodies could be let into the brain that specifically target tau proteins, adding the ability of an almost course correction. So what are the effects of these combined treatments? From what we have seen, at least in mice, memory is significantly improved and as such, so is quality of life. So I've been working on a car now for about uh, nine months. So think about it this way. You have a car with an old gas filter that's clogged up. Even though you are running clean gas through it, the car still doesn't run well. You drop C foam into that bad boy and the aggregates get cleaned out and the car runs much better as a result. Same situation for the brain. With these proteins brought under control, or at least dissolved, the mind can be repaired somewhat leading to a better life. Obviously there are some issues. If you ignored the symptoms for a long time, remember that you are losing neural tissue along the way. Neurons cannot be revived once gone and normally they will not replace themselves. So the key is early detection and aggressive treatment to stop the disease from progressing. Again to harp on my first episode, this could all be cleared up with gene corrections utilizing CRISPR, but that's going to require some further work down the road from where we are now. However, where we are now is fairly exciting because we could all have more time with our loved ones with a clearer memory of those things actually happening in our advanced age. So thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed my video over a possible course correction for Alzheimer's. If you did, leaving a like helps and subbing is a great way to keep up to date when I post. Okay, so I literally bought a camera for this episode, but alas, it was like wide angle, so it was the wrong one. So I am waiting for the next one to come in tomorrow. Uh, I'm also doing my EMT clinicals currently as well as preparing for like a ridiculous amount of tests. So bear with me over like the next couple of weeks. Um, I will have more time probably around Thanksgiving to start posting more stuff. But for now, I am just totally swamped. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching and I will see y'all in the next one.